Bear Bets podcast is back previewing the AFC and NFC championship games to be played on Sunday. I'm your host, Bear Chris Felica. Jeff Schwartz is here with me in New York. Sammy P and Will will join us in a little bit for the uh, the gambling group chat to break down both of those games and anything else that may come up. We, we kind of take some some detours throughout that conversation. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah, I, imagine, imagine <laughs> that. But So how was your trip to Buffalo? Oh, it was fun. It was fun. Um, the Bills Mafia was fantastic. Um, it was uh, it was just, you know, good old football banter, right? Just some back and forth. Good. Um, way there was be. one rude comment that wasn't even directed at me. It was to someone else. And if that comment was said to me, we would have had problems. But the rest of it was just, like, perfect. It was perfect. <laughs> you know, Chiefs suck. You suck. It was the best part, Bear, of the, of the, of the, the shit talking back and forth was – when I was I was in the Bills section, I bought tickets. My cousin in law is a Bills fan. I want him to experience the Bills sideline. Mm-hmm. I could have gone the Chiefs sideline, whatever. I bought tickets on the Bills sideline, thirty five yard line, section one thirty two, row twenty nine. Great seats. It was a lot of fun. When I was, I noticed early first quarter ish when I was sitting down. I'm a Chiefs beanie on, mm-hmm. big overcoat, black overcoat. So really, all you see was the Chiefs with my beanie. People would take their shots when I was sitting. They'd walk by me. Of course, hey. Chiefs suck. What one guy said Josh Allen is my daddy. It was kind of a weird comment considering they didn't beat Kansas City yeah. in the playoffs. Um, when I stood up, not a word was said. <laughs> the entire that. game. The entire game. Um, and then then Jason Kelsey goes shirtless, right? And we all we all seen the video of this, obviously Travis's brother. And I got so many text messages from people about taking my shirt off in the game. And it was not to be. I was not taking my it was cold. It was cold. Jason was in a box. I was not. I was a man of the people in the stands. Um, but look, I I have a special place for football stadiums like Highmark Stadium. It is an older stadium. It, I, I grew up going to the Rose Bowl. So I, I I love like the vibe. You're just there for football, right? Yep. You're, you're not there for a corporate event. You know, when you play in some of these bigger stadiums, I've only, you know, look, I retired in 20, after 2015 season. I've only played in a couple of them. I played like in, in you know, in, in the Cowboys Stadium, like these new stadiums where Stale, it's, it's, it's more about wide correct. open. It's more about the the I've I've seen a game in the new Georgia Dome. It, it's a lot about the amenities, right? The, mm-hmm. the the corporate nature of that place. And I'm not saying that's a those are bad things. I, of course, I'd love to go a game where the bathrooms are clean and there's abundance of food. But Highmark Stadium had that old school vibe to it, where people were there for football. Mm-hmm. They were there for football and they're tall boys. You know, like, they, 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 the food was just okay, right? The bathroom situation was just okay. But the fans were there for the ball. Uh, and it was it was um, quite interesting, too. The, the vibe of the crowd, you know, early on, loud, right? Like, it wasn't the most, the loudest stadium. Everyone, people come by, people ask me, this is really loud. I'm like, ah, it's okay. It's not the loudest <laughs> stadium in the world. Um, but then after that fake punt, man, the fans like puckered up quickly because they could feel like, oh, here we go again. And then the vibe completely changed, obviously. And then after the missed field goal, man, the amount of of vile insults thrown in the Bills' direction, yeah. not just Tyler Bass, like the, the fans were so heartbroken in that moment. Um, but all in all, great experience. Bills, I, I, met, I went to a tailgate. Someone just saw me, invited me to tailgate. It was great. Um, the food in Buffalo was fun. I was on Niagara Falls was a lot of fun. Um, I should do more. I should be more spontaneous. I'm not a spontaneous person like that. See, I am. I, I love to be. That's good. I'm, I'm glad you had I'm, two things here. Number one, yeah. stadiums. You know, I don't need all this ridiculous. Give me a hot dog. Give me a pretzel. Give yeah. me a beverage. I'm good. I had I had an Italian sausage and a slice of yeah, pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that's fine as well. Yeah. I, I don't need. Like like the new Yankee Stadium with like oh been, we've yeah. got it Philly the, the corporate oh. the corporate uh, give me I, the old stadium say, though, any day of the week man Shea, uh, not Shea Stadium City Field with Shake Shack though is pretty good I, I'll, that's okay like for a newer stadium to have a burger there that's like a, not a bad burger yeah, yeah but any but any any bathroom where number two is not an option that's <laughs> well, I, I, too, I, I get I get I, the feeling I, I, I get the feeling number two is not really going to be I, an option. I joked with my wife too about like she's like how's the I didn't I be, I, when I showed up at three o'clock I had nothing to eat outside the sausage and the pizza because once I put my snow pants on my snow they weren't coming off ski bib on you know it's up to here yeah. getting number one was easy I could just take everything yeah. off and unzip and kind of mm-hmm. go but number two like taking the the heavy overcoat off. The Chiefs jacket, 
the ski bib, the thermal, it would have been a problem. Um, so I didn't do that. Um, but look, man, the Chiefs, they, there's something about the championship mentality, right? Where mm -hmm. I don't think they're, people say, well, they've turned it on. I don't think they've turned it on. They've cleaned up some issues, right? They haven't dropped the ball as much. Jawan Taylor not getting penalized as yes. much. I think that one penalty that was yep. declined at the end of the first half. But they still make that dumb mistake, right? I mean, look, the Chiefs have a brilliant offense and then give the ball to wide receiver eight on the goal line. And and so, like, they, they still do things <laughs> like that. that you're like, like, why Pacheco's, are we doing this? Pacheco's getting, like, 90 yards. Why are we doing this, Chiefs? I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I don't want to say I'm glad. That's not the, but that was one thing that I immediately thought of yeah. on Sunday afternoon was, how Bass is going to get all the shit for this, and he's going to be the one blamed. And I'm like, no one's going to like blame Josh Allen for making two poor decisions on the on the drive before that. Yeah. No one's going to blame Stephon Diggs yeah, for dropping Diggs, a touchdown. No one's going to blame the defense for not getting a stop for the first three plus quarters of the game. No one's going to blame the, 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 the fake. The, no, no one's going to blame the fake punt. No one's going to blame the, the getting a little conservative there, maybe worrying about time and not wanting to give him a home. Yeah. Like there was enough blame to go. Over. It, it was a team loss. It, it was. It was the last line of defense yes. with Ben. And by the way, if he makes that kick. There's no guarantee Mahomes doesn't go well, down the field and win the game anyway. The way Mahomes have been playing, they, they would probably – they would have two timeouts, I think, yeah. and a minute 40 yeah. left to go down. Um, you mentioned something that's interesting. So when a team is losing and they're driving down the field, all right, to go win the game or tie the game, there's this idea of, well, let's just conserve time because we don't want the other team to, to get the ball. It makes sense, right? Like we, we understand the purpose of that. But my problem with that logic is that you, you still have to score, though. Yes. And scoring is the most important thing. And it's a team game. Like, you need your defense to play well. That's why the overtime rules, I'm always like, well, it's a team game. Like, play defense. Exactly. Special teams is part of the team, right? It's not just an offensive game. And the Bills in that moment had to score points, preferably a touchdown to force Mahomes to need to score a touchdown of their own. And when you slow things down like that, you, your vibe and your rhythm gets thrown off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you have one bad play. And look, I think it was Shakir. Shakir was open. Yep. Josh Allen got hit on second down. You can make the argument that Diggs was open as well, but when you drop a pass on the same drive, it's not throwing mm -hmm. you the football. Shakir was open. Then on third down, obviously, you and, and you leave yourself a small margin of error when you slow down like that. And I think the Bills should have just said, screw it, man. Let's score a touchdown. Worry about playing defense later. And maybe... There, they allow points so quickly, they get the ball back again <laughs> with an opportunity to, to score. So uh, a lot of fun. Thanks, Bills Mafia. I know you don't like me on Twitter. So be it. But then it was in person. It was, it was fabulous. Uh, do you want to get to, to some of your wagers, Bill? Yeah, we got, yeah. We, got, we, got so, a, we got a couple of, like, props within these yeah, games. So let's start these, with yeah, these numbers are rough. the AFC Championship game, the Chiefs at the Ravens. We know Mahomes, 9-1-1 one one against the Spurs underdog. <laughs> Um, I think this number is a little short, but uh, it is what it is. Money coming on the Ravens today as we speak. Ravens are four-point favorites. Yeah, we, we both like a lot of props this week. What prop do you like in this game? I like Mahomes under 243 and a half uh, passing yards. I, I think yeah. this is obviously going to be a much better defense than yes. what we've seen the last couple of weeks that the, the Mahomes has faced. I think the windows will be shorter. The coverage will be, will be tighter. Um, and I think a lot of the is uh, the, the a lot of the play calls that yeah. that are they're called as pass plays uh i think maybe the the chiefs inability to get open will result in patrick mahomes running and scrambling so i'm going to kind of play the correlated deal mahomes over 25 and a half rushing yards is something i like as well but under under 243 and a half pass yards because i think as well you might see the chiefs offense kind of play a little bit more complimentary than usual just because of the injuries that they do yeah. have on defense as well, not giving Lamar yep. and the Baltimore offense the ball as well. So under 243 and yeah. a half uh, passing yards for Mahomes. It is so hard to bet against Mahomes, but I think this is the it right is. way to go. And we'll talk a lot about this in the gambling group chat, mm -hmm. sort of the game flow of the game. But I think the Chiefs are going to have trouble throwing the football in this game. I think so too. Um, when you look at, this is the game, I think they kind of get exposed for not having that number one guy, even though Rasheed Rice, I think is, I think Rasheed Rice, his ceiling is like a 1B type of type of wide mm -hmm. receiver. They still need that 1A. And this is the game where I think you missed the 1A. 
Because if you take, if you say, okay, look, Travis Kelsey, we're taking you away. We'll put Kyle Hamilton on you. Which I mean, that's why he's in the NFL is to right. guard Travis Kelsey. Right. Or we'll put Queen or, or Smith on you at certain times. How they match that up, the the, the pressure Mahomes is going to probably see. Joe Tooney's injury. I mean, it's, it's we're going to kind of against Kansas City in lot. this game. But the thing is. You could just see Mahomes do Mahomes things, which is so hard to bet against. And one, one I like in this game we didn't get to in the game with group chat. I want to mention um, Zay Flowers under four and a half receptions for this game. Um, the 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 Chiefs take away everyone's number one wide receiver because Snee is so good. Um, the last four games, Diggs had three catches, Tyreek Hill had five, Chase had three, and Devontae Adams had one. They take away the number one wide receiver really well. I think it's a defensive game. So I think Zay Flowers under four and a half receptions uh, is a way to go in this one. Let's get to uh, the next game, the NFC Championship game. And guys, we're going to cover all these extensively in Gamma Group Chats. This is just a couple of wagers bear likes right now. The Lions at the 49ers, a nine or seven, maybe seven and a half. Some places now bear. Uh, Lions, we know, great, great covering the spread. Shanahan last week, first time in five home playoff games, he's not covered the spread. Uh, what, what do you think of here? Yeah, and it was a really weird end of the half, a really weird game where the Niners uh, very easily could have lost. Uh, but but I think I think the fact that they over they got maybe it will equate it to like the NCAA tournament where the high seed gets scared, yep. and then after that they kind of run. exhale, yep. breathe, play better. And I think we're going to see that. And I think it started in the fourth quarter last week with Brock Purdy in that final drive where he was great. Could you imagine if if it was Jordan Love who had, who had played so crappy? Like, 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 could you imagine if it was Brock Purdy who had the final couple of drives yeah. that Jordan Love had? Like, he would be getting absolutely killed if, if he played the final drives like Love did. Yeah. And it just people love to hate yeah. on Brock Purdy, which, hey, look, it's, it is what it is. But over 272 and a half passing yards for Brock Purdy, I like this week. Even if Debo doesn't play, I get a sense that he's going to play. I, I think the fact that the game is later on Sunday, yeah. to kind of get an extra day to, to heal up and be yeah. ready. And then you have the, uh, the the couple of weeks off between the Super Bowl side. Like, this is a Lions defense that gave up 350 to, to Baker, what, 370 to Stafford. Um, they've got a ton of problems. And I think Jennings can yeah. come in and make some plays. You saw him make a big catch late. Like, they've got enough guys. And, and I think the Lions' ability to stop the run means you're going to see more passes to McCaffrey out of the backfield. So, uh, Purdy over 272 and a half was the, uh, the, the play I liked here. Lions 28th in EPA against the pass. Uh, How many teams are in the NFL? They, uh, 30, 31, 32, 32 now. 30, yes. 32. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Um, yeah, no, 32. Um, it, it's just their pass defense is a liability. They've allowed 140 yards plus, uh, to a wide receiver in five straight games now. Um, and the Niners don't have that number one guy per se, like Mike Evans or Justin Jefferson or Puka Nakua, like, but they have enough guys the way they're going to be schemed up to get Purdy. And I think you're right about we see sometimes the one seed struggle. I mean, even the Ravens, the game was tied at 10 and they took off in the yeah. second half. I think we'll see the Niners play better this weekend. And part of that, part of that will be Brock Purdy. And then and, and we'll have the discourse in the other direction where he's like the best quarterback of all mm-hmm. time after, after yes. talking about him as a bum for, uh, for a week now. All right, let's get to the gambling group chat. There's only two games. We cover props. We cover Super Bowl future. We cover a bunch of things here in the Gambling Group Chat. It's a lot of fun as usual, and we'll get you guys set for the two championship games on Sunday. Here is the Gambling Group Chat. Gambling Group Chat is back. Jeff is alongside me here in New York. Sammy P. and Will Hill uh, join us again. Uh, conference championship weekend here. You can get started with the, uh, the Ravens and the Chiefs in Baltimore, and then uh, the nightcap on Fox. Uh, 49ers hosting everybody's uh, Cinderella darling, the Detroit Lions, who got that Interesting cover with Todd Balls going for two. Like the math probably says that he should, but uh, the Lions run 8.1 or 31 23 over Tampa. Now the Lions going on the road, seven point underdog in San Francisco. Sammy, it, 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 I get the feeling that the Lions again are going to be a pretty trendy underdog in this game off of what we saw the 49ers uh, do last weekend. Psychologically, though, I am hesitant about the Niners because on this program last week, I said, the Niners will score at will, and that was not correct. So I think, <laughs> look, I think Niners are the right side. Niners are probably going to win this game. They're a seven-point favorite. But I don't know, Will. Like, you know, we had a lot of variations of Niners bets, and 
It was sort of like that scene in Space Jam when Charles Barkley gets his talent zapped out of him by the alien. That's what happened to their offense when Debo got knocked out. And it took them almost three whole quarters to find their mojo. I don't want to put too many eggs in the basket from last week, but when you lay seven with a team that almost lost outright, or lay nine rather, it's psychologically hard to move on and want to lay seven again. I I mean, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that's sort of where I'm at right now. Yeah, and their numbers without Debo, uh, with and without, are just, there's so much of a difference. And uh, look, it, it was not pretty last week. Not only did they not cover, not only did they almost lose, they should have lost. I mean, Love got a bad spot on one of those quarterback sneaks. Green Bay had two long drives to start the game that got inside the 10. And you end up, you look up and it's only 3 nothing, where it could have easily been 10 nothing, 14 nothing. I thought after that long Jones run late in the game that this game was about to be over. So the 49ers very fortunate here. Um, and I was scoffed at by Samuel last week when I said, let's maybe take a look at the 49ers a little differently because all of their big <laughs> wins have not aged well. There was scoffing. There was uh, other sort of things. But look, uh, I, I wasn't impressed with the 49ers defense. Purdy was terrible, and I, I love Purdy. Uh, I just can't get there with Detroit because I look at yards per play allowed to the Rams, 7.7. Yards per play allowed to the Bucks, almost 7 again. That's in Detroit. That's at home with the crowd noise, the Dome. Now you're going outdoors um, against a 49ers team that has much more weapons. I just, I don't know if I can get there. I don't know that I want to lay seven, especially Shanahan is so conservative. Uh, what he did before that, the end of the first half was one of the more ridiculous things I've ever seen in my life. I can't, I, I still can't believe what I watch with that. So I, I'm really back and forth on the spread. I'll probably end up like if I had to make one bet right now in the game and I haven't because I have futures at work with, you know, the NFC to win the Super Bowl, Baltimore, San Francisco, exacta. I probably just go back to the well and play San Francisco team total over 28 and a half. It didn't get there last week, even though Dre Greenlaw tried to get me home. I think he's still in San, San Francisco running around <laughs> trying to get in the end zone. He was just uh, running like a chicken with his head cut off, looking for somebody to lateral it to it. It was just uh, a wild sequence that would have swung the, the cover, the spread, the total total everything. Um, so I, I'm really back and forth. I, I would play San Francisco team total over. I just can't get there with this Detroit defense. Detroit is good against the run, which gives them a chance, but that secondary is so bad, Jeff. I don't, I don't know if you have a, a play on this game and um, I'm curious what you think because Detroit's offensive line is banged up and that could be a story here where San Francisco can finally get some pressure. Yeah, there's so much to get to in this game. A lot of comments that you guys made, I, I've sort of echoed in my in my game preview. The thing about Brock Purdy that's really tough, right, is that he obviously had a great season, but when little things aren't exactly right, he's a different guy. You mentioned Debo Samuel being out. He completes 10% less passes. He throws more interceptions. They, they score less points per game by far when he's not in the game. There's four games this year. He missed a few, and then obviously he, he played 10 snaps or less in that last game. Guys, when the ball is wet, Brock Purdy can't throw the football. Like, all these little things that when it's not exactly perfect, the offense is not the same. And so if Debo doesn't play, which seems like he's not going to play, does this offense change? Does Brock Purdy change? Does he play worse than last week? But as you guys have said, the Lions' pass defense is atrocious. They, they have allowed 140 yards plus to a wide receiver in five straight games now. Five straight games. Mike Evans had 148 yards. I think we're all over his over do, 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 game. Do, do, do you know who had the highest uh, wide receiver yardage total in the uh, divisional round? Oh line? no, Was did he? Yeah. I, so you you were I, weak. You were weak early. But but I but I did take Baker Mayfield most passing yards okay. in the divisional round. So I was covered there. So I like I I have Brandon Ayuk over. I think it's 80 and a half receiving yards in this game. Uh, I think he's obviously got to target him. I mean, look, the, the the trends are holding true with the Lions. Look, the the offensive line you mentioned. Um, Ragnar, I think, is going to play. He's played all season, really beat up. That offensive line is really good. The Niners' pass rush is not as good right now. The Niners can't stop the run, guys. I mean, if, if the Lions commit to running the football like the Packers did, I think this game is going to be really close. They can keep running the football, running the football. It takes, obviously, wind out of the the the, the Niners' sales as their pass rush, their pass defense, and also they get the ball less on offense. I, I also like, guys, uh, Jameer Gibbs over its 14-and-a-half for longest rush of the game. The Niners have allowed a, a rush of 16 or, uh, yards or more now uh, to five running backs over the last four games. I think there's, there's certain places you can wager on this game that aren't the total or the side. Agreed. No, I, I, as we talked about before the group chat, uh, I'm on Brock Purdy over 272 and a half. And this is a Lions defense. You'll add 349 to Baker, 367 to Stafford. Uh, I think even if uh, Debo Samuel doesn't play, I think they have enough weapons to go around. You mentioned about their ability to stop the run, which probably means you're going to get a lot of passes uh, 
to Christian McCaffrey out of the backfield. So uh, over 272 and a half is, is, is a, uh, a play for me with Purdy because I think, too, with the weather uh, being okay. It's interesting, though, because he threw the ball. Oh, can remember that game in Philadelphia where the weather was kind of crappy and it was yeah. misty and rainy? Like, he was okay that day. It was the Browns game. But, they, uh, yeah, the, yeah the, Brown, the Browns game, he struggled, right. and the Browns defense got after him. Uh, but but I, I I think I think the fact that they kind of survived that game last week and he had that great final drive and the, I, I think maybe it might be one of those like exhale moments and so I, I like I said earlier I, I like the two over two seventy two and a half uh, with Purdy would you play Debo if he's not one hundred percent Jeff for props well no 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 in, in, if, oh, if you're the for forty the um yeah, I think you sort of have to because you need to get to the Super Bowl and then, and then you have two weeks off. Like okay. if he can, if he contributes enough, I think you have to play him. And, and the question I think is that, is can he do that? One thing Will brought up that's that's very interesting about this game that you really it's hard to sort Will of brought something interesting up is yeah it's one one time all season it's happened once about time um, the coaching aggressiveness right <laughs> like Dan Campbell is always yes. aggressive. He's going for it. He's pushing the limit. He's going to go for it a fourth down. He's going, to, he's going to go for two when he's supposed to. He's going to follow the math. And Shanahan is the exact opposite. He plays for field goals. He plays for conservative. He plays for punts. He doesn't go for it on fourth down as much. I think that's a big part of this game. Now, it could hurt the Lions if they're 0 for 3 on fourth down and fail on two-point conversion. They lose this game and, and don't cover. But if they if they are more aggressive than San Francisco, they go into the game thinking to themselves, we're going to play aggressive. Shanahan goes into a game thinking to himself, ah, I don't know, field goals and, and run the football and let, let's be conservative. The mindset like that, Sammy, does that change the way you handicap a game? No, because it can work both ways. I mean, Dan Campbell could do something irrevocably stupid. I'm still waiting for it to happen. It hasn't really happened yet because they've been a decided oh, it, oh, it, it happened last week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It did. I mean, not, it didn't not challenging them, that Baker play. Or not running out the clock properly. Bad. Here's here's what I'm thinking about, and I saw this from uh, from Jason Logan on covers. I don't know if you guys have seen this. It's the numbers of Detroit's offense inside and outside. So indoors this year, the Niners or the uh, the Lions rather are averaging 30 points per game, 30, 30. When the Lions play outside, that number goes down to 17.8. Now they've only played five games outdoors the entire season. When they went on the road this year, they played. What at uh, against Vegas, they played at Minnesota, they played in New Orleans, like they played in a lot of indoor tracks this year. And I think that the GM there in Detroit did a perfect job of building that team for that stadium with the turf, the fast track. Obviously, the crowd gets into it. They love their football in Detroit when the team is good, which is once every 50 years. But they have not been efficient. <laughs> they have not been productive when they're outside. And, and I don't know. I mean, it's not a big sample size because they've only played like 20 football games this year. But the offense is a lot different when they're outside. And they're outside this week. And I don't know how much weight to put in that because it is 70 degrees and like 2% yeah. chance of rain. But statistically, they are a lot better at home when they are on the road. And, and, and that has to be accounted for to some extent. Yeah, it's just it's hard when it's 70 and sunny to make the weather or that the venue too much of your handicap. But I agree, like both both quarterbacks, you worry about playing in weather. So if we did get rain, which doesn't look like we're going to, it, it would change it and maybe it lend you towards an under. But again, it's going to be, you know, 65, 70 degrees and sunny. So I can't put it too much into my handicap. But I think uh, Jeff, Jeff mentioned Campbell. There's so much variance with him. If you remember last year, they played in Green Bay week 18 on Sunday Night Football. They just been eliminated. They played that game fast and loose. I think they faked the punt. They ran a hook and ladder to clinch awesome. it. They're going to go into this game knowing they are outmanned, overmatched. They can't just play straight up. So he might do anything. I mean, he might go for it on fourth down on his, in his own territory. He might surprise onside kick. He might go for two. Every, I have no idea what Campbell is going to do. It introduces so much variance to it where, you know, he could steal a possession along the way. I think that's something to watch here with Campbell where, uh, you know, he, he could really go into this game. It's house money. He's not the better team. I, I think he's going to be ultra, ultra aggressive. You know, we, we've had our fun here, uh, kind of making fun of Campbell and, and the kneecaps and the going. But you know what? As a head coach, your number one job is to build a team and a staff around you. And get, no, your number one job is to cover. To win and make every but. Oh, and he does that pretty damn well, by the way. <laughs> he does, exactly. Are, are, don't, aren't they the number one cover team since? since and he's good at the dog, same, too. Like, yeah. It, 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 but it's like all this like 
stuff that we kind of laugh at and make fun of somehow it all works. He's put together a good staff. He's got these guys believing. So while he's not the greatest X and O coach, and maybe some of these decisions don't necessarily go, maybe he's the guy who is sitting at the blackjack table who he's going to, he's going to, he's going to hit on 17 thinking that there's a, there's a four coming out in the deck. He might, but as a head coach, he's a damn good head coach because he's put, like he's put his, he's put his team, uh, together in his mold, and he has that team believing uh, in they could achieve things that maybe they didn't necessarily think that they could do. So we've had our fun making fun of them, but uh, the fact that they're here, that this is, I don't think this is a team that's kind of built for the short, short term either. Like I, I think, I mean, this division uh, c- could be really, really interesting for the next few years to come with the team that the Lions have, uh, the, the, the Bears now with all those picks, Green Bay on, on the up. I didn't mention Minnesota. Well, you got anything to say about the Vikings? Are, are they uh, going to be in the play? No, I don't think so. It is it is a good division. Uh, but but you mentioned Campbell. Like we all just kind of make fun of him. And, and look, he's in the final four with the Lions. So give him credit. He's a guy who played under Parcells. He was Sean Han- Sean Payton's right hand man. So uh, I think maybe he's a little better, a little smarter than we think. Granted, he didn't run out the clock properly last week, which is one of the more insane things ever. And Bowles not calling the timeout, which was even more ridiculous. Uh, I'll say this too about golf. People treat golf like or refer to golf like he's Zach Wilson or something. This is a guy who went to a Super Bowl. And you can say it was all McVay. He was down 15 in New Orleans that year, brought them to the Super Bowl, won a playoff game in another year. I mean, for a guy that nobody seems to like, I think he's won five or six playoff games now. I mean, golf is not that bad a player. Again, when you go outdoors, it's cold. He's under pressure. He can fold a little bit. But, like, you could do worse than golf. In a, in a year in a league where nobody can play quarterback, golf's really not that bad. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And when you talk about golf and gotten that off both offenses, and we t- you, you hit on it earlier. Sammy, like Detroit or San Francisco, like which defense do you think is the bigger liability and which defense do you think right now has more issues? Because 49ers like might low key kind of be very, very mediocre on defense. Whereas you got the lions as well with all those issues in the secondary, giving up all those yards. But I think both of these defenses have some issues. Don't you think? Sure. I mean, to, to ignore San Francisco is an only highlight Detroit's would be farcical look at the total 51 and i promise you that's not gonna all be san francisco <laughs> you know detroit's gonna gonna move the ball as well i mean this this total is a whole seven points higher in the nfc than it is in the afc and when you have a total of 51 that's the odd make uh odds makers telling you that you're gonna get both teams to score at some point i mean san fran's not gonna win 42 to 7 that's i'd be surprised if that happens so you're gonna get both teams to score touchdowns I still think, though, at the end of the day, you know, if the the Niners play their A game, because they haven't played their A game yet in a while, and it didn't happen in week 18 when they benched everybody, they didn't play that first round in the playoffs, they played about a C game against Green Bay. My concern for those backing the Lions here, taking all the points, and it is a lot of points for for a conference championship game, is that if San Francisco plays its A game, this is 31 17. That's my hesitation with the Detroit thing. Uh, but as I said, when you lay nine last week, and as Will said, they should have lost. It, it, as much as people say it's not difficult to erase what happened last week, it is. Like, I am more hesitant this week to lay seven because of what happened last week. And that's the truth. That's the truth. And, and Will, isn't that the time, though? Don't you want to hop in at that point where – it might not seem as as obvious or it might not seem like a really good opportunity, but, but you know, like after playing so poorly last week, you would think that they're going to come out and play a lot better. Don't you think? If they were healthy, I just don't know about Debo. And you guys both mentioned Jeff and bear both mentioned they kind of, you kind of alluded to the fact that you think Debo's not going to play. I hadn't heard that. I was more like 60, 40 would play again, going on nothing, going just based on, Hey, it's not broken. It's just a pain uh, tolerance issue. So I, I thought he was leaning more towards playing than not. Again, I don't really have the information. That's just such a big part of the game. And we're not going to know anything that, I mean, we could sit here and check for the updates until the game starts. We're not going to know anything because even if he plays, we don't know if he's a hundred 
hundred percent healthy. We don't know if he's just a decoy. And if he doesn't end up playing, they're going to play it close to the vest. They're not going to, we're not going to know that until the inactives come out. So the idea that we're going to get some information on Samuel, I, I don't think is, is going to happen until the game starts or right before kickoff, if he's inactive. And if you're betting that, if you're betting the game without that information, that's a huge part of it. I mean, uh, bear yeah. Steve Fezzik, who, who we, uh, you know, mutual friend, professional handicapper. He's very mm-hmm. conservative with giving out points, half points, assigning them to players. He basically like, unless it's the quarterback, a lot of these players are interchangeable. He gives Debo two points to the point spread, which I, I can't argue with. His numbers on off yeah. uh, are, are just insane here. And that's in Mike Pritchard uh, yesterday, a former NFL wide receiver and played at Colorado, won a national championship. He said the same thing on, on a numbers game with Gil Alexander that he thought Debo had like a, like he would assign him like a two point value. So to have a former right. player say who really isn't a super a, a regular better say he would say around two points and to have Fez who is a professional better say two points Jeff like they, they, it's a big deal yeah. well because the, the the splits are there and we obviously have seen the performance with with, with the look the report right now as of right now is that it's not a fractured shoulder obviously but there's not a lot of movement in there right which means there's swelling and there is just a, a lot of bruising in there look today's Thursday we're recording Thursday morning. We'll see his status for practice. I would imagine he's not going to practice today. So that leads more credence to not being able to play on Sunday. But you're right. We have to probably wait till Sunday to figure that out. The inactive list, the game is at 630 Eastern, right? So the inactive list is at 5 right. o'clock. So at 5 right. o'clock, we have to wait till 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock Eastern on, on Sunday to make that wager on whether or not. And he might try to go and not play it and, and not be able to do it. I mean, th- that's my concern too, right? If you have a bad shoulder – you're not, you can't avoid contact, right. right? And so the first play of the game, the Lions might come out and he might try to block someone on a run and they just hit him in that shoulder and it, it goes, it, it hurts again. So that seems to be the issue to me with, with that type of injury for, for a wide receiver. Um, but you look, the, the numbers don't lie when he doesn't play this offense as much ever. And that's why I think we go back to talking about Purdy, right? It's like how good, is a quarterback that that isn't as good without one of his weapons. CMC still playing, Kittle still playing, Ayuk still playing, Trent Williams. I mean, everyone's still there minus one guy. If he's a two, if he matters two points, I mean, who around the NFL guys outside of quarterback on an offense yeah. is worth two points? And anyone is that is maybe, that a knock on maybe a teammate that McCaffrey? That's about is? it. Yeah, maybe McCaffrey. That's about it, though. So as we're having this conversation, I, it's I funny because like we. You, yeah. We got this. We got this tape at eleven o'clock Eastern, just to give everybody some context here. Superbook just went to seven minus twenty. Bet Online just went to seven minus twenty, and DraftKings went to seven and a half. So Ooh. even with this uncertainty I about, I was say, I mean, seven and a half is coming. They're still laying seven. So I, yeah. I, I mean, if, I think this is sort <laughs> of a. I don't want to say a halfway number because it's not going to move. Like if Debo gets ruled out, it's not going to go to five. And if Debo gets ruled in, it's not going to go to nine. But I I think that straddle around the seven is is fair. If Debo's out, we probably see more six and a half. If Debo's in, we might see north of seven. So it's important to obviously get the right numbers. If you like the Lions, you should probably take a seven and a half no matter what. Um, And then, you know, the other part of the equation is if you like San Francisco, you're probably not wanting to lay seven minus 20. You just wait it out. You always want to lay the right number, and you're going to have many different points to enter the market uh, in the coming days, depending on how the market goes. There goes Circa, 7 minus 20. So they're laying 7 flat right now. They're laying it at, at this point in time. And we don't think about eight as being a key number. We think, oh, seven, seven and a half. With these teams down 14, they score a touchdown, they go for two more. The mm-hmm. sixes, the eights are more important. So you think, oh, seven and a half, no big deal. Who cares? Seven and a half, eight. If you can get an eight, now we don't sit here and just make up numbers. But that eight it comes into play a lot more. We saw last week with Tampa, Detroit, with these teams going for two. You, 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 can, you can take eight and lay like 160, Will. Come on. You can, you can, you can just do that. Just, just name, name, name your price. But you're right. I think we had this conversation Last week, Sammy, I remember because there were there was a seven at Circa with the uh, Lions Bucks yeah. game, and I, and I and I remember we were talking like, yeah, of course you'd rather take seven than six and a half if you like the Bucks, but seven maybe isn't as key of a number as it's been in the past, and then ultimately that's what the game came down to that the, you you wind up losing by eight instead of seven or six because you go for two like like Bowl should have done. Any other bets or thoughts or anything on the NFC Championship game before we go to the first game, you guys? Have anything, Sammy? Well, yeah, I was just going to say you got something. You always do. Yeah. The, 
the the first time uh, Campbell coached the game for the Lions opening day a few years ago, it was 48, 24, 545 left. And the Lions almost had one of the more improbable comebacks you'll ever see. They actually cut it to eight and had the ball in the San Francisco 23 yard line with a chance to tie with a touchdown and two point conversion sort of signified what kind of team Campbell Campbell was going to coach here. Just, you know, fighting till the end. I think they covered that day. So uh, I don't know that that game plays into this handicap at all, but just interesting, you know, how, how far Detroit's come here under Campbell. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna lead lead Jeff in a direction here with the uh with the Chiefs Ravens game and I I want to get him wound up, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chiefs fam who uh, had a great experience in Buffalo last week. Yes, but I, I want to ask you a ask you a question. Yes, are the Chiefs a little bit of fool's gold here? You beat a in an injury ravaged Miami Dolphins team in negative sixty eight degree temperatures in Kansas City in the first round. And then you go on the road and you beat a Bills defense that basically had Shane Conlon and Cornelius Bennett and Phil Hansen and Fred Smurlis playing by the end of the game uh, in a game that, oh, by the way, you very easily uh, could have lost and you didn't punt. So is this game going to kind of expose Kansas City a little bit uh, for maybe kind of getting through a couple of uh, very undermanned teams in the postseason or – We'll end it on a positive. Okay. Or are we going to be sitting here again on Sunday evening watching San Francisco, uh, Detroit saying Patrick Holmes is an underdog, did it again? It's going to be take the Chiefs' best game to beat the Ravens. The Ravens are really good. And um, when you look at the way you want to build a championship team, you want to have an elite quarterback, obviously, in Lamar Jackson playing well. And then you want to have physicality. Check. And the Ravens have both of those at a high level. Um, and, and the, the Dolphins didn't have that. The bills don't have that on defense and the Ravens can do things defensively, like take away Travis Kelsey that no one else can do. If you take away Travis Kelsey, what else do you have on the chiefs offense that you can rely on? You know, like Ray, she rice can play, but you know, it's a rookie. He's not maybe MVS ready. MVS caught that. a ball last week. MVS caught two balls last week. I was right there. I was right like, at the 30 yard line as he caught the first pass. I was in awe. I was absolutely shocked. Yeah, you were there. And then you were, when he caught a ball, you were, I, I was sitting there and I'm like thinking exactly of you. I'm like, oh my winning. God, he, he caught yeah. a ball in front of Jeff. It was right, it was right there. And then um, on the flip side, like the Ravens run the ball very well, as we know. The Chiefs defense is really good, really good, but they're not the best at stopping the run. Like, I just think it, it will take the Chiefs' best effort in this game to get this done and probably a little bit of, the Ravens making some mistakes they haven't made this season. Um, and I am, as a Chiefs fan, I am concerned about the Chiefs' ability to win this game. And I actually think the number feels a tad short, Sammy. Like four, it, it, it feels a little short for this game. Do you think it's just because everyone's going to sort of say Mahomes covers his underdog and we have to make this number a little shorter than it should be? Well, it was three on Monday, Tuesday, and that got blasted off the board. I mean, and, and people, let's be clear, people that are betting on Monday and Tuesday are not mostly public bettors. I mean, those are the ones that are laying good chunks down. So they laid three, and, you know, it's now four pretty much everywhere in Vegas. A lot of three and a half of the domestic shops, the DraftKings, the Fandals, the Caesars. Um, but I, I think still there's going to be that push when we get to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's when you're going to see people fly into Vegas and people, you know, start thinking about gambling on this game. And, you know, I would say probably 80% of people are going to bet when we get to the weekend. And a lot of those people are going to go, that's a lot of points for Mahomes. And it's it's not a lot, but it's it is points. And him as an underdog has been extremely profitable. What one loss in his career in like a nine or 10 game sample size? That speaks to people, and and people look at what they perceive to be the better quarterback getting points, and they're going to jump in. But this is really just like if you're betting Kansas City, you're betting it for Mahomes and Reed. Like I, I don't know what else your yes. edge is. You're betting it because you have the best quarterback and maybe the most talented quarterback of all time, like given the abilities that he has. But if you're betting the team, you're probably betting Baltimore because Baltimore is clearly the better team. So – Look, I was thinking about this. I know this is kind of square, and I don't think I've ever brought up a parlay on this show. I don't hate a Baltimore-San Francisco money line parlay at even money. Then you could do that right now. And and I'm going to assume that Baltimore probably wins this game. Then you could do whatever you want in the night game. You have the big favorite at night, and maybe you can take seven and a half with Detroit. 
So then you got Baltimore in the house. You're halfway home. You have the Niners to win. And now you can middle it with a seven and a half point marker. You know, Niners win by four. You can win both. That's sort of where I'm at. The reality, guys, is that these are two of the tightest lines of the entire season. I made Baltimore three and a half. I made San Francisco seven. I can't sit here and pretend like there's a massive edge with either side. I mean, these are the tightest lines of the entire season. And I I don't, yeah, I don't want to lay four because you could have laid three. And that's, that's just how it shakes out. Sammy went from making fun of the bartender's place to stealing his place. Two money line parlay favorites. My goodness, what is happening? <laughs> Look, we all do these shows. We try to say something, think of something nobody else has said, thought of. It, it, with Mahomes, it's just so simple. He's the best player at the most important position. Uh, you think about it. The last time this title game was not in Arrowhead, 2017, Blake Portals was the quarterback for the Jags in New England. Uh, imagine the odds you could have gotten on Patrick Mahomes when he was drafted to say, hey, he's going to sit for a year, then he's going to make six straight AFC title games. I mean, it's just unheard of. And look, I, I don't want to lay three and a hook against him. I, I know Baltimore's the better team. Baltimore's numbers against playoff teams are incredible, but they, they're they not invincible. They were tied 10-10 and at the half against Houston. Houston missed a kick, could have had the lead at the half. Lamar looked flustered against the Blitz. Uh, this is still a team that, you know, Stafford threw for 300 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. They're beatable. Should be a great game. When in doubt, take the points with Mahomes. I know it's square. I know it's sort of obvious, but that's where I'm at with this game, Bear. Yeah, I, I, t- I took Mahomes under 243 and a half uh, passing yards because I, I think you're going to see a lot. Of, we, we know that they don't necessarily trust all their wide receivers and MVS catching a couple of passes like we were joking about before with, with Jeff, the odds of that happening again, forget it. And and I think they know with their defense beat up a little bit, maybe keep Lamar off the field. So I, I think you're going to see a lot of those uh, design pass plays, the called pass plays turn into Mahomes' run. So I, I don't hate in addition to Mahomes under 243 and a half uh, Mahomes rushing yards over, which I found, at a 25 and a half, I think is where it was the other day, uh, last night at FanDuel when I when I put that in. So yeah, under 243 and a half pass yards, over 25 and a half rush yards, because I think that's probably the way that I think the Baltimore defense will allow Kansas City to play. The kneel downs last week, by the way, oh. Mahomes over rushing hit with by one yard with with those kneel downs at the end, and it should have cashed obviously with the long run he had uh, there at the game. I, I have Travis Kelsey guys under five and a half receptions. I know sometimes we don't want to fade Travis Kelsey in his moments, but he had a, a great game last week, five catches. Like, that's it. Like, he's at the point of his career where, you know, I think he's not a guy that we're going to expect later in the season as the playoffs get deeper to end up with seven, eight, nine receptions. He's just not at that point in his career. After every reception, he was off the field for a couple of plays. Like, he's getting older. That's part of, of being an older football player. And I think the Ravens, with Kyle Hamilton and with the linebackers they have, are going to focus on taking away Travis Kelsey. If you take away Travis Kelsey, who's the next option? Is it Rasheed Rice? Is it MVS? Is it Hardman? Is it is it Pacheco? Is it Noah Gray? I mean, like, who, who is the <laughs> – you know, like, that's this is why I think the Chiefs might have trouble. And why I think Mahomes and, and Kelsey under, like, if they take away Kelsey, okay, we're going to gonna double him. Who is next in line? And I do think there's a, there's a possibility too, and I haven't looked at the exact numbers for any time touchdown for one of these like Noah Grays, a Blake Bell, like just some random Chiefs receiver to catch the football for a touchdown because they're going to have to go somewhere else in this game and stay away from Kelsey um, and stay away from Rice. I mean, if they, if they decide to take away those two guys, who was left to catch the football for Kansas City? Stephon Page. But no. No, not no, so. It won't, no. be, it won't be stuff. Like uh, I mean, Hart, I mean, Hardman, like, you try, I don't know. It's just, no, I don't know who that guy's going to be. Not Sky Moore. It's not Hardman. Yeah. So I'd be really worried about the Chiefs. M- MVS, playoff MVS, man. He shows up in the playoffs. I'll tell you that. Is is now the time, Sammy, to, we, we, we like looking at, we always, during the year, we talk about taking, investing and building a portfolio with the Niners, with the Chiefs, which with whomever. Is now the time to bet Baltimore? to win the Super Bowl, to bet, to bet those look ahead lines where, where maybe Baltimore is a pick them or a one point dog uh, against, against San Francisco, because if that is the matchup that you're not going to be able to get Baltimore plus one, right? I get this feeling. Whoever wins the AFC game is going to be favored. Even if the chiefs pull it off. I mean, is Mahomes really, really? going to be a dog? 
Super Bowl. Yeah, I, I mean, it's possible. Not like a three-point favorite. I mean, look, San Francisco is my highest power-rated team right now. But that could change. And if Debo's not playing, I mean, their rating is just different. So I, I, I'm writing a story about this for Fox. Tony Miller said the same thing. And I, I sort of agreed with him. And he said that he thinks any, any AFC team is going to be favored. So take that for what it's worth. That's just one man's opinion. But I tend to agree. I mean, would, would we be stunned if Kansas City was a small favorite? I I wouldn't. I mean, it's, it's Mahomes and Reed, and they have two rings already. It's just... It's the reality. I mean, San Francisco is a better team, but, you know, as we've talked about, Mahomes is the great equalizer. To answer your question, yeah, I think this would be the time you could bet Baltimore two to one. I was actually the other day, I was looking at uh, a parlay, Oppenheimer to win best picture and uh, Ravens to win the Super Bowl. It was like 250. God, I swear. Well, Oppenheimer's not losing. I mean, to create a (laughs) nuclear explosion on you is like you're winning best picture. Um, and I fell asleep during Oppenheimer, but I know how it ends, right? We all know how it ends. Um, how, so how'd, win. how'd you fall asleep? It was so gripping. It was so gripping. It was when four were, and a half hours long. That's why clipped. I fell asleep. It was great. That's why I fell asleep. No, what well, wasn't so the, uh, what was the, the, what was the other movie that was like four, four and a half hours long? The Oppenheimer was like, wasn't that long. What was the, uh, the, Barbie, Barbie. No, no, not Barbie. The, uh, Flower Moon, the Flower Moon I heard was like four hours long, wasn't it? I didn't I see don't that. Know. It, it, it must Oppenheimer be nice and the Ravens. Will in, in the theater. <laughs> you no, can parlay not. Oppenheimer and the Ravens at 250 if you're so inclined, if you're trying to be a degenerate like I am at this point. Um, but to the point, I want to go back. Throw, to Sabal, so, throw Sabalenko over Quinn Win Jang in there, too. Five oh, dollar no favorite. Let me give you a little there's bit there's of no value. value. <laughs> Travis Kelsey <laughs> has caught a touchdown pass in 10 of his last 12 playoff games. And three of those times he caught two touchdowns. And I I think Jeff is completely right, you know, inside the 20s, like from 20 to 20. He's not the same guy. But still inside the red zone and inside the 10 and inside the five, Mahomes still looks for him. And Reed still scripts for him and schemes for him. We might see that, that little shovel pass inside the two. Travis Kelsey to catch a touchdown, you could find plus a quarter. And to catch two, you could find nine to one. I'm not saying he's going to do it, but we could take advantage of the lessened appetite for Kelsey. I mean, Kelsey last year to catch a touchdown, minus 170, minus 190. Now you can get plus 125, and he caught two last week. So I I think if there's one way to bet Kelsey, it's to take plus money on the touchdown. Yeah, if there's a prop I like, both quarterbacks to run. I, I think Mahomes, if he goes back to pass and all his guys are covered, nobody's open, uh, he could just take off and run. Big games, these quarterbacks tend to run more. And Baltimore plays man-to-man, so uh, that that leaves some more some more running angles open. Jeff, I'm curious because, uh, you know, we talk about Debo Samuel in the NFC game. The AFC game has a key injury. He's not on anybody's fantasy team, so people, you know, half the audience maybe hasn't even heard of him. But Joe Tooney, yeah. the guard for the Chiefs, one of the better guards, doesn't sound like he's going to play. Peck injury, how big is that for you? Well, it's, I mean, they said it's a strained pack. I, I hope he does play. I he hasn't practiced this week. It's a big loss. I mean, he he was their their best lineman on Sunday. The, the backup came in and did an okay job, but this is not the same defensive line he played in, in Buffalo. It's a huge loss for him, especially in a game where they probably want to run the football a little bit more, right, and, and protect Mahomes. That's why I think the, any of the Mahomes props, I'll talk about it in my best bet, but, like, the rushing props to me, Mahomes is going to have to be that guy in this game, right? He doesn't, he's not doing it as much as he is. He gets kind of older in the NFL, but if they want to win this game, Mahomes is going to have to do a lot with his legs. The, 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 the tuning injury, the man coverage, not having guys open. Like those are all big issues. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the tuning thing is a problem. I, I think, I think sometimes they put, you know, an injury report strain pack and it, it looked pretty bad. I mean, he got hurt on the, on the Pacheco yeah, touchdown dude. run. Uh, he got kind of just tossed and, he tore it right there. I, it it doesn't seem great. I'll put it like that. He might try to veteran it up and just be a wily veteran and figure out a way to play. It's a playoff game. He has two weeks off if they win. Um, but it's a it's a problem if he can't play. He's their best lineman. How much? How much? How, how much? Uh, what's the painkiller threshold? Like 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 like, like what, what's what's the what what what's the medicine? What's the medicine? Tortal. Tortal. Yeah, how, how much we shooting him up with on Sunday to be able to play? Just one tortal. Just one? Yeah, you don't you don't get more than one. <laughs> you get one torn all. You get one. Can you block all. a three hundred pound man with a torn pec though? Uh, you can find. I mean, they would they would harness his shoulder so it couldn't move very right. much. 
and you would find a way. That's the thing. Like as a veteran, you might be able to find ways to to get to get by. You slide the center toward you and pass protection. Uh, so I'm curious if you can make it work. Obviously, they said strain pack, just like they said Debo is, you know, the shoulder is not as bad, but I looked, it looked worse. Like, I, look, I think a, 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 a few things to note with these injuries, right? Like these are games these teams obviously had to win. And Debo did not come back in the game. Joe Toon did not come back in the game at the end of the game as the team's trying to win this one out. If, if they were like, quote, unquote, okay, they probably would have tried to play still, right? And, and they weren't able to do that. So that, that, that concerns Good me point. for both those players being able to finish this game. Um, I want to piggyback one last thing on what Sammy said about the AFC versus NFC. We're going to either have Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes against Brock Purdy or Jared Goff. Like, I kind of have a lean of where I'm going to the Super Bowl right now. I mean, how often do we see, like, the lesser quarterback, like, by far, the lesser talented quarterback win the Super Bowl? Foles obviously did it, but, like, wh wh when have we seen the lesser, like, by far, like, not, not you, know, you know, Burrow, Stafford, maybe Burrow's a little bit better, Stafford wins, but when it comes to, like, Mahomes or Lamar Jackson against Jared Goff or Brock Purdy, the talent gap in those quarterbacks is pretty large. It, 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 it does, it does feel that. And that probably gets back to what you were talking about earlier, Sammy, where why the AFC would, would be favored in that game because of the edge uh, at the quarterback. If, if we don't get Baltimore, Kansas, if we don't get Baltimore, San Francisco, who, uh, who's going to screw it up? Which of the two favorites is more likely to lose there, Sammy, do you think? Oh, Baltimore, because of Mahomes, for sure. Um, a Baltimore Detroit Super Bowl would be freaking wild though. Can you imagine if we get, you know, <laughs> those two fan bases in the Super Bowl? That's that's gonna be wild. Um, but I mean, just it, it's an easy answer for me, Bear, because Baltimore is three and a half, four, and the other team has Mahomes. Um, look, the Lions could win, the Chiefs could win. Um, wouldn't that be something too if we had a repeat of the opening game of the right. season? When Detroit didn't Detroit win twenty one to twenty beat Kansas City on uh, on Ring yes. Night or Banner Night and what if that's the finale? What if that's the opening and the closing? I mean, look, nothing is impossible. I'll say it again: these are these are one offs at the end of January, and both spreads are seven or less. So it's it's not like anything is impossible. And the ball's not even round. It's single elimination, and it's not a round ball. So it, it, it doesn't matter who's better or worse. If you're minus two in turnovers, like, if you're minus two in turnovers, you're probably going to lose. That yeah. That's, like, the most important stat, and we don't know how that stat's going to go. So, yeah, I, I think to Sammy's point, it's interesting. I can't – boy, Baltimore-San Francisco, I think, would be a pick -em. It's hard. Like, they played Christmas night. That's one month ago today. The line was six and a half. Can you really have, like, an eight, nine-point adjustment – uh, based on that, I, I don't know. I do think the AFC might be just better than the NFC based on all these head-to-heads. You know, Baltimore killed Detroit. They killed San Francisco. San Francisco lost to the NFC to the AFC a few times. They lost to PJ Walker. Um, I don't know. The one that looks a, a little off, if you look at the look ahead lines, Baltimore laying three and a half to Detroit, if that's the Super Bowl, that looks light. Baltimore, I would think that would Seems get fed up. I know there'll be a lot of sentiment. Yeah, really, really low. Remember, they beat them by about a million points back in, I think, late October. So that's one that seems light. Yeah, especially if Baltimore blasts Kansas City. I mean, if Baltimore wins right. 28 to 10, right. I, I know that the power rating is the end-all, be-all, but when we talk about the Super Bowl, perception is somehow sometimes more important than reality because people are going to bet oftentimes going into the Super Bowl what they've last seen. So if if Baltimore wins 28 to 10, you, you can't make it three and a half. You, you'd have to probably start at four and a half and then see where you write your first bet. But I think these are the two games that – that will really will really play a lot more into the Super Bowl line. Like it's not the whole sample size. It's the last two weeks going into the Super Bowl because these teams are different than they were, you know, at the beginning of December and the beginning of January. Gentlemen, always fun. We will uh hopefully some people learn something. I want to get back to this toward all thing though. Like, like I, I know I was taking like two oxy every three hours for, yeah. for a bit with my shoulder. What, what, what does one toward all do for you? So it's a, it's toward is anti-inflammatory. It's not, a, it's not a pain medicine. So it just, oh, well, what fun's that? It, it makes it, well, it does dull the inflammation. So it, you don't feel like okay. it's worse when you play, but it eventually wears off. Like when I had my bad, when my ankle was messed up, it would last like a half. The second half was very painful. The point with my bad Yeah, yes, yeah. Sammy, it did, it did, that, did not treat me well for. Yeah, Bear, yeah, Bear's trying to find. Did not treat me well when that when that. 
Yeah, that 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 that, uh, that that nerve block wore off, and that that did not that did not go well. Uh, about thirty six hours after the surgery, when that nerve, yeah, they and the doctor, yeah, we take, you know, you're taking one every four they hours. They gave you the tortol during surgery. Well, I'm, sure, surgery. I, I'm sure they, I'm sure they did. I had a, I had a basket full of, Medicine. full of stuff. Need, yes, it was, it was wonderful. You, but yeah, I went from. You need that doctor from any given Sunday. Who's it, Matthew Modine, who just shoots the guys up? That's what Bear needs. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew Modine. I mean, ex- exactly right. I, yeah, I, yeah, someone like walking down the. Just walking he, into the room, what do you need? You really also can't. No, it was James, James Woods, I think it was. Yeah. You could do about that. It was James Woods. Yeah. Yes, it was. In the, yeah. In the Sunday, yeah. Why, but it isn't, you can't go right into like the muscle. You got to find the nerve, right? I don't think you can shoot like cortisone into muscles. I think it goes into like, into like tendons and ligaments and joints and stuff like that. Yeah. I've never had, I've never been shot up before. So I don't know what, I don't know the procedures for tortoise. Really? I've had tortoise. I've been over this before. I've never had, I've never needed, is that the thing? I think it's like a movie thing. It doesn't happen very often. Yes, My opinion, I, 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 I want to hear all warrior stories about you. Your opinion of me, I've been three operation. weeks without feeling in my foot. Uh, here we go. Now, see, now we're talking. These, this is what, see, people don't give a shit about picks and this and that. They want to hear about travel, tour it all, injury, not they feeling. They want to hear about the, 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 the upper decker and the porta potty and, and high, uh, outside Highmark Stadium. Yeah, now see, this is another one. <laughs> be, be, best best, best porta potty, best stadium bathrooms. But like, oh, geez. Like, 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 all but, the new stadiums have nice bathrooms. It's terrible. All, all the old ones have all the old ones. I liked Harmark Stadium because it was, it felt, it was old. It's obviously a very older stadium and there's no, no thrills. Like it just was, you're just there to watch football. Beautiful. Football and drink and eat. Trough. Trough in the bathroom. It was, it was, See, that, that. that was like show, old Shea Stadium when the Jets were still there. Like, like there were, there was like an immense shortage of, yeah. Like your like like sinks were used. It was just a nasty, yeah, gross, that's the porta potties disgusting were place. It was just it was awful. Yeah, wings were good though. Buffalo, you guys do wings very well. Good for you guys. Where, where'd you good. go? Bar Bill. Send, send, you want to send them to my house for Super Bowl, please? I'd love to. I please send them. I'll send you my address. I wonder if they trip to Turks and Caicos. You know where to find me. I don't think so, Barry. Yeah, I don't think they'll make it. <laughs> we 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 did all right at Shark, Shark Bite is where we went, and I don't know anyone who's been to. We, they, we, had, we, had a, we were there for uh, the, the Rams Bengals game. I would never ago. be out of the country to watch a Super Bowl. I would not trust anyone. The only the only thing that stinks is is not having all my my DraftKings and FanDuel apps and being able to, being able to fire. But we can we could probably figure out a workaround around that. Sammy and Will, I'm sure we bored you by, uh, by now. Did you ha- have we have we uh, surprised you guys are still awake? Speak for yourself. I just I think we need the Fox Sports <laughs> present. Bear Bets podcast operation game where bears just injecting people <laughs> trying to find the muscle. <laughs> <laughs> massage, massage my scar here. Find find the nerve right here. Dave. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now, 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 now I think on that note, we're officially going to end in the, in this group chat. So we're, uh, we're taking next week off, but we'll be back a uh, week after that with a bunch of stuff previewing the, uh, the big game, the big game, the big there game in Vegas. I, I don't game. know if we're allowed to go. say Super Bowl or not. We just said it there. So. Yeah, we did. We did it, yeah. So, all right, guys, have a great, <laughs> have a great championship weekend. We'll talk again soon. There, the guys seem riveted by our discussion about about medical uh, injury history and and what we do to to get ourselves ready to play. See, I'm see that's the stuff that interests me. But that, that's the stuff that I I love hearing the like the inside the locker room stories or stories about like, like all of the stuff that we don't see like that's what i love hearing okay so in uh, 2015 i was coming off i fractured just getting my ankle in 2014 in the season i had surgery um and then in the middle of 2015 season my foot my left foot went numb but i couldn't feel my foot anymore it had, we were playing the eagles on Monday night football that the, after the game my foot was burning on the bus and i sort of realized like it wasn't working well and eventually uh, we I played the Cowboys and we played the Saints. And at the end of the Saints game, my whole lower leg like shut down because the muscles you, were. We were the Vikings or the Giants at this point. Giants. Uh, we lost the Saints 52 49 in the Superdome um in that game. Uh, if you remember, it, I remember, but it was terrible. Um, but like all the muscles in my lower leg stopped working. They had been they had been overworked because my foot, I couldn't feel my foot. So my muscles sort of like went dead essentially. 
Um, and I take, it's the only time in my career I've ever took myself out of a game. I'm like, guys, I can't play. I can't feel my foot. My leg is not working right. I had a nerve problem from the surgery, so I got an injection Monday, and then all went away. I was fine. Like, immediately it was fine. I had too much debris floating around in there. I actually had an extra tendon in the back of my ankle that was with the extra tendon and the debris from the surgery sort of floating around there. It it, it squished my tarsal tunnel. And so I the, the, the surgery that you had on your ankle, they put an extra tendon in? No, no I already I had, had it in there. Like a certain percent of people have an extra tendon in the back of their ankle. It doesn't really do anything. I've never heard that. Yeah, I didn't know it existed You could have like given it as like a, a you know, replacement as like, like people needed extra tendon for their well, ankle. So they took it out. So then I broke my leg again. 364 days from the first break. So I had surgery again. They removed the plate and took the tendon out. So some one of you out there could be walking around with Jeff Schwartz's tendon, yeah. extra tendon in your, in your- I have a video of it too. The, the I'm doctor, sure you do. The doctor did a video of the extra tendon in there. It's pretty It's pretty cool. It's like a, you could see like this giant like piece of flesh that and, should- And it's like you you were all excited when, when, when oh, I have to have my shoulder replaced. And like the first thing you said was, have you seen the surgery? And I'm like, no, I haven't seen the surgery. I don't want to see the surgery. I, I, know, I know they're going to put me to sleep. They're going to saw my shoulder yeah, off and hammer off, yeah. and do what else. And I'm going to wake up and I'm going to have a, a, new, a, a new shoulder ball in my humerus. I don't like to watch surgery videos, but I like the animations that people put up of, of, of surgery. It's like, like when Rogers did his Achilles, there was an animation of like how they do the speed bridge yeah, thing. That, yeah, that I don't mind. Like, yeah, and I've fine. seen animations of like shoulder surgery, like how they do it. Now, I'm not sure if, I like those ER shows where they show like the doctors working in, the, in like, you know, in the hospital. But the, the surgery stuff, especially no. when they cut the flesh, it like freaks me out a little bit. Um, but uh, Everything about it freaks me out. What either. doesn't freak me out though, are your two wagers you've made so far on this show? <laughs> that was an abrupt end. That was a great segue. Yeah, I was wondering how you were going to Radio professional, buddy. All right. You have Mahomes under 243 and a half passing yards and Brock Purdy over 270. Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. I can't read. All right. Yeah. Reading, reading not my best thing. All right, Bear. Let's get to our best bets for the two championship games. What do you got? Yeah, I laid one. I laid 120 at DraftKings. Uh, Lions team total uh, over 20 and a half. I like uh, it. That's the thing I feel most confident about uh, in that game is that the Lions will score points against the Niners defense that I, I think is really, really vulnerable on the back end. I, I think you can make the case that if Debo doesn't play, maybe the Niners do struggle and maybe they have to. Maybe they will not go over yeah. their team total. Maybe they will not cover. Uh, but I, I think either scenario with with whether Lions score points and get up on San Francisco and and hold on and win, or the Niners' offense is humming and the Lions need to keep score left and right to keep pace. I, I think both options give you a path, a pretty good path to 21 points with Detroit. Yes, I know that Sammy brought up in the group chat about. That. Uh, the indoor outdoor splits, but like yeah. like Will was saying, the weather's going to be fine. It's not yeah. going to be twenty five mile an hour wind. It's not going to be eighteen degree. It's it's, it's going to be beautiful. That 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 it won't. If I lose this bet, it's not going to be because the Lions played outside. It's going to be because <laughs> the 49ers defense actually finally showed up for the first time in quite some times. The Niners defense isn't as good this season. That's the thing. They have they have I, issues we, we in the keep secondary. Saying like, now, oh, when do they show up? I I don't think that's. Is that a personnel deal or is that a schematic deal going from I think it's a D'Amico deal. to, to I think it's Wilkes? Both. I think that, that D'Amico was an obviously excellent defensive coach, but they don't rush the passer as well. They're just not. They're not as good rushing the passer. Um, they don't have that. They have obviously Bosa, but he has not been as good this year. Mm -hmm. Chase Young is not as good as kind of a, a and, and then inside they're just again they're not as good this season. The Lions have a really good offensive line. They have an All Pro center and all who's a little beat up. All Pro right tackle Taylor Decker. I mean they have a good offensive line. That, that, that could be the Lions win this game as their offensive line. I wish there was a wager to make on the offensive line, but uh, like being really good. But I would, I would their, their offensive line is really fun. We need to, watch. to get that book next year. We need to have a, a sports book. I don't know what the we, I don't know what it would be like the Jeff we, Schwartz we, offensive line yeah, wager of the week. Like we need to like odds to win the Joe Moore Award for college. Oh, I'll tell you right now. The favorites will be will be LSU and Oregon for next season, heading into this season. To LSU, we with the kids transferring out. Yeah. Okay. Maybe LSU and Oregon. It wouldn't be Washington. They have no more offensive yeah. linemen. Um, How many did they lose? Any more starters from the from the depth chart? <laughs> I say do that every week. Uh, <laughs> their left guard just committed to Ole Miss. Ole Miss today. Um, 
they they don't have. I know Miami was in. Will on, Rogers came Miami, back. Miami, so Miami had, was in on him too. Yeah. Like how did how does Mario not get an offensive lineman? Your offensive line's not bad in Miami though. They're okay. It's all and old Miss old Miss is paying everybody. We know that. It's legal. Honestly, I it's know. Legal. It's, yeah, I Might know, as well make that money. All right. That's what you wanted. You wanted you wanted NAL to basically pay kids to transfer hey, it's, in now. It's good for Oregon, buddy. We have by the way, we've not talked about this very quickly. Jim Harbaugh. I was to going to bring this went up. Went to the Chargers. Um, love it for Justin Herbert. I love it for the NFL. Jim Harbaugh won in San Diego. Yep. He won at Stanford. It's hard to win at Stanford. He be he he, he beat won. USC, what, 15, 16 games after well, they went Owen, Owen, whatever. Well, he beat. They were forty and one, forty-one point underdogs yeah. in that game. Yeah. Coliseum, forty-one points. By the way, it's a lot of points. Um, he won at San Francisco and he won at Michigan. Mm-hmm. He's going to win in Los right. Angeles. Now, do you think it is? My, my my question here was: Is it a quick fix, or is it going to take some well, time? Well, so the cap situation is not great. Correct. They have some older players, Ian Allen, M- Mike Williams, and and, Eckler, right? and Cleo Mack. They're making a lot of money. Um. But you have Justin Herbert, so you have Start. that piece already. Uh, the draft is interesting because at, at, at five, Brock Bowers feels like the perfect fit for what they need to do. <laughs> Car Harbaugh, Harbaugh's but, offense with Herbert and Brock Bowers. But Harbaugh might see Joe Alt and and get very excited. Yes. The tackle from Notre Dame. So I'm kind of curious how they go in the draft. But I also think, too, the Harbaugh hire brings credibility to the Chargers, yes. who are an organization that – Nobody believes is credible, right? They, they, yep. you're. I'm a fan of the Chiefs. Obviously, I've watched Chargers play for years. I grew up in California. The chargering is a thing, right? Because they're t- they, they 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 lose games they should win. Every fan base sort of has like that team, right? The Chargers and for the Pac-12 was Washington State. They coog everything. The Chargers they charge everything, right? Harbaugh should get them out of doing that. He's a legitimate coach. He's bringing over Jesse Minter as his DC most likely. They mentioned Greg Roman as the OC. I'm not the f- biggest fan of that. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, I, I, that I, I'll tell you what, the, the wild card OC is David Shaw. He interviewed for that job. I, I think that that's the wild card OC. He was his OC at, at Stanford. Stanford. That, that's a wild card OC. That, oh, now, be great that would be a great, like, that's Incredible a David hire. Shaw. That would be a, a good hire. Incredible. I, 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 it's because I, I, someone asked me that question um, the other day about, about Harbaugh. And and I said, like, the issue with the Chargers hasn't necessarily been the personnel. It, no, it's been, there's Staley. been no identity. It's been Brandon yep. Staley making bad decisions, inability to close out games, finding yep. ways to lose. Now, if they can make a couple of decisions and decide who they want to keep, who they don't, like, he's won every, like, they're, they're going to be prepared. They're not going to make stupid decisions. Right. Like, and, 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 you, and, and the division, and you worry, the division too, it's like, the Raiders, I mean, obviously now with bringing in Pierce, and they played better with him. I don't have a quarterback. The, the the Broncos, you don't know. I mean, yes, they have Sean Payton, but you don't. I mean, yeah. they need a quarterback now as well, and we'll figure out what, where they are and kind of a are they in a rebuild? Are they or where are yeah. they? And you got the Chiefs with, with, with Andy Reid, so you got a pretty good division now in terms of. Yeah, I don't think Harbaugh's the, afraid of that though. No, not at all. No, not but, at all. Uh, and I think Sharon Moore will get the Michigan job. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd be stunned if he didn't because that that that's like the best ending resolution to all this for Michigan because you keep a guy who's coached some games. He's been there for a while. He knows you're going to get some penalties, but at the same time, yeah. you're not going to lose guys in the portal because they're going to stay with Sharon. It's not going to be like what happened in Alabama when Saban left or in Washington when DeBoer left. Like, they're going to play for more. Yes. So they, like, they're, they're, they're good. M- Michigan is in the best possible yeah. spot. I, I think giving that they kind of knew all along yeah. that Harbaugh was going. Yeah. So Sharon Moore will end up, I think being the guy that's a good hire for them. All right. I got to finish up my, my best bet here before I do that though, for the last time this season, bear, it's not too late to play the free Fox super six game for championship weekend. Just download work the Fox sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 in weekly cash prizes. All right, my my uh, my best bet is Patrick Mahomes over four and a half rushing attempts. Yep, I game. like that. Um, I didn't go with yards. I mean, yards he he might get. Um, I hope so. But I know you have you have him over as well. He had six last week, including four kneel downs. He had two against the Dolphins. But this feels like a game where the pressure the Ravens are going to bring, the man coverage, and no one being open. It's going to be a full kitchen sick Mahomes game. He's going to have to run the football. Yes. And this could even be a game where the Chiefs use him. We've seen it times in these games. 
They use them in the speed option game. They use them in, in some, it's a move, move the pocket type situations where he's out in the open. So over four and a half rush ups. Again, the kneel, the kneel downs count. So yep. um, there we go, Bear. We did it. All right. We did do it. Yeah. I got to get back, back home and work on that super six column. I know. For the final time this year. Yeah. You seem excited. Good for you. Yeah. No, it'll be, it'll be okay. A couple, couple of games really dive into you. I don't got to, I don't got to worry about going back and forth, toggling back and forth between like a half a dozen games to focus on. You got the AFC game, the NFC game, and, and that will be that. Uh, um, we, we have a, a, before we get out of here very quickly, Uh-oh. Um, Dave, Dave Canellis got hired by the Panthers while we were talking. Okay. Um, and uh, the, uh, that's it right now. So that's all we have. Does that mean the only open job is Atlanta? Atlanta and Seattle. Dan Quinn's second interview with the Seahawks right now today. So that's it. Atlanta and Seattle, right? Who'd Washington hire? Washington. Ben Johnson, probably. Okay. Yeah. So do, do we think the fact that Atlanta is taking so long and giving all these other people second interviews that they're trying to look other than Bill Belichick? Yeah, he would be hired already if they would. Okay. I feel like the, the Bobby Slowick is uh, – that's what it seemed like as well. He is he is young and has not coached very much. You know, he spent four years, it's not a, a down thing. He spent four years at PFF as like a data analyst. It's interesting. I first PFF hire ever. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty no, good. Um, so yeah, that's a that's it for the show. Yeah, so uh no uh nothing next week in the uh, in the off week between yep. the between the Super Bowl and the two conference title games, but we'll be back. Uh Jeff and I'll be going out to LA to, yeah. to the to the lot. We'll be uh, recording a bunch of like five. We're rolling the red carpet five, out for us. Five, five different episodes. One, one of them will be devoted specifically to, uh, to, for a large portion of it, specifically to uh, your tweets and your questions about the game, bets to make in the game. Yeah. And so that we're, we're, we're looking forward to that. But uh, until uh, until then, for Sammy and Will, Jeff is here as well. Who just bid do as well. I'm Bear. Appreciate you all again for downloading and, and viewing on YouTube, wherever you can see your podcast all year long. Uh, numbers were great, I'm told. And uh, can't wait to get back out to L.A. and do it and remind you again that the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.